What's up guys, I'm Morley from Yellron Blog. I bought a new laptop last summer, but I've been using this neoprene oversized laptop case for my old laptop since then. So today I'm going to show you how I made this properly sized, corduroy lined leather case for my laptop. Stick around! The first part of this project was making a plywood stand-in for my laptop. Stacked together, these two pieces of plywood are almost exactly the thickness of my laptop. I cut these pieces out a bit wider than the laptop on all sides to make for an easy fit and account for the USB mouse dongle that I like to keep plugged in. I glued these together and came to the realization that I definitely don't have enough clamps. Once the glue dried, I gave the whole thing a quick sanding just to remove any splinters that might damage the leather. I used the plywood blank to cut out the big piece of leather that would fold to form the case, leaving room on the sides to account for the thickness of the laptop and the stitching. To line the case, I chose an old pair of corduroy pants. I like corduroy for lining a laptop case since it's soft, durable, and you can orient the lines in the direction of the opening to smooth putting in and removing the laptop. After sizing the lining, I used the laptop blank to wet mold the leather in the general shape of the case. Next, I lined the case in two sections. This was a bit tricky with the leather already molded, but I think this results in a better end product than if I lined and then molded such a large piece. The seam between the two linings is actually in the bottom inside of the case, so it's impossible to actually notice in the finished product. The adhesive I'm using here is Lepage Low Odor Contact Cement. I purposefully didn't extend the lining all the way to the edges of the case so that the final edges are only burnished leather without a layer of lining trapped in between. I had to do some trimming after lining to draw the corduroy back from some of the other edges. On the edges where the corduroy lining is exposed, I used some suede deerskin remnants as a transition to the burnished edge, sort of like a hem. As you'll see at the end of the project, this deerskin actually burnishes really nicely at the edge with the veg tan leather. After the glue was dried, I used the leather as a straight edge to trim the deerskin edging flush. With that interior edge finished, I could reinsert the plywood blank and glue the sides. When the glue was dry, I trimmed the flap to its final dimension. Of course, after this trimming, I had to draw back the corduroy lining from the edge again. A razor blade worked really well to break the contact cement bond. I did the deerskin hemming for the flap the same way as for the interior edge. Yeah, 
Next, I trimmed the sides flush. Cutting through two layers of leather plus glue took a few passes, and I ended up finishing the cut with a razor blade. To secure the flap shut, I decided to use this brass halter buckle. I've used one of these in making a dog collar, and I like how they have a sort of double action that holds the little extra bit of strap. Conveniently, this buckle accepts a one inch wide strap, and my speed square ruler is exactly one inch wide. This made it super easy to cut the straps. To attach the halter buckle, I punched a series of holes and then filed these into a nice smooth slot. On the other half of the strap, I just rounded its end by eye with some leather scissors and a file, and then punched holes. I was only really planning on using one of these holes, since laptops don't really grow like people. The rest were most for symmetry and style. I then beveled all of the edges. I also added grooves where I would stitch the bag together. Before dyeing the piece, I wanted to add a little carving accent. I used a carving on my tactical Nalgene sleeve as a template, just freehanding the cursive, and went over this indentation with a swivel knife. Now that I had finished cutting and removing leather, I was ready to dye the piece Canyon Tan. This dye job didn't turn out quite as even as I hoped, and I think the first reason is that I didn't case the leather quite enough. Now, you can see a second main reason for the unevenness right here. I definitely overloaded my dauber with dye on that stroke and a few others, and that's almost impossible to correct after you've done it. The last mistake was starting the dye process on the front of the case, where I made all my big mistakes. This was also my first experience using a relatively light colored dye on such a large piece, and I wasn't expecting its sensitivity to streaking. These were all really useful lessons to learn through messing up, but in the end, I actually really like the overall color and texture of the case. After dyeing and buffing, but before sealing everything, I rubbed leather conditioner into the whole case to restore its moisture. Another new technique I tried in this project was using gum tragacanth to slick the rough suede side of the strap. This actually ended up working pretty well, especially after burnishing it a bit. I sealed the leather with two coats of tan coat finish. To bring out the carving, I used dark brown antique finish, another first for me. This is actually pretty similar to coal rosing and wood carving, something I do have some experience with, except with paste rather than a powder and oil. I just rubbed the paste into the carving and then rubbed out as much of the excess as I could with clean rags. While the antique finish was drying, I made stitching holes and stitched up the side of the case. I learned recently that doubling back on your first and last stitches really strengthens the stitch as a whole, taking a lot of the stress off of the knots, so I made sure to do this, especially on the exposed outside corners.
Once the antique finish was dry, I applied two coats of tan coat over this area. Before attaching the straps to the case, I burnished their edges, using the gum tragacanth again as a burnishing compound. In the past, I've had issues with getting a good bond with contact cement on finished leather, so I sanded away the finish on the little spot where I would attach the strap. The order in which I punched stitching holes here may seem random, but I was really trying to make sure the hole stayed symmetric and the piece stayed cohesive. Like the die, messed up stitching holes are a pretty tough mistake to cover up, so I made sure to get it right the first time. Finally, I could attach the buckle to the body of the laptop case. This stitching ended up being pretty tricky since I had to search for the other side of these holes on the inside of the case through the corduroy lining. It's always a little frustrating when the tricky steps manifest right at the end of the project, but once I got into a groove, the stitching process here wasn't so bad. The last step was burnishing all of the remaining exposed edges with gum tragacanth. On the flap edges with the deerskin edging, I was pleasantly surprised how well these two materials burnished together to form one uniform edge. A major lesson for me in this project was learning to accept that the imperfections of something handmade do have inherent value. And I think that's especially apparent when you look at the factory produced generic case that this one is replacing. Sure, my old case served its function and looked essentially perfect off the assembly line, but I think something handmade and more visually striking is better suited to hold an item which honestly lets me do miraculous things. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Yelron Blog. I post more frequently on Instagram, so follow me there if you want to stay up to date with what I'm making.